Good to see you. Nice to see you. To see you. Nice. Ollie, Ollie, Ollie. Who let the dogs out? Okay. Got working at diversity thing, guys. Come on, guys. Because you guys love that on TV, innit? You always say diversity like this. Why do you guys do that? You know how many meetings I used to go to? Mo, we're just all about diversity. Why is it? But then again, you can't do closed hands diversity. You can't. It's all about diversity. Oh? Sounds a little bit Brexit, right? I know some of you have gone to some talks and stuff like that. Maybe talk about diversity, inclusion, and all that stuff. That's what they were talking about. It's all about inclusion. And when we can include diversity, then we can have representation. Just say, you need some black and brown people. Just, just say it. Why don't we have any BAME controllers? I think people still see people like me as a risk, and it's one of the most offensive terms a risk. that I have in the last two years. <laughs> basically said to people, stop, stop calling me a risk. You are not taking a fucking risk on me. I have been a producer director. I have worked with really difficult people. I have made really difficult programs, yet I am a risk because of who I am. Should we be setting up a kind of training scheme for white London, you know, men, you know, we wouldn't dream of doing it. And yet that's what, what happens all the time. It's like, oh, let's do another diversity training scheme. Yes. Let's just give them jobs. Let's just yeah. employ people. That's what we do, <laughs> you know. Part of the problem in terms of breaking out of these bubbles is it's all very well and good for us to say this mm. to you mm -hmm. because these people all agree. Mm. And part of the problem is these conversations are often very cyclical. They're spoken by people who have an interest to people who already have an interest. And my big idea is we should have done this and build it as Hugh Laurie live. Yeah. <laughs> like, because the yeah. problem is that we aren't, these messages aren't going to the people at the top because they don't fucking okay. turn up. And the feeling that you're not alone as well, and that's what great television does, is it's, you, you see a representation of yourself, your community, your friends, your outlook. And that had been what was so missing from the yeah, it's LGBTQ lonely, plus it? landscape. Yeah. It's so lonely when you're, you're not out to a single person on it. You're, you're struggling to come out to yourself. And, and to see these people living their lives and being happy. And, you know, and it, 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 you know, when you think at that time, you think, oh God, this future's been snatched away. I won't have wife and kids and all the things I'm told and I'll be miserable for the rest of my life. It transformed, I think, for a lot of people who were very miserable, a lot of young LGBTQ people. So thank you for that. Yeah, no, I, properly thank you. <laughs> so Top Boy is a fantastic program, but are you guys ever concerned that it may be, uh, reinforcing stereotypes of the black community? No. no. Because I feel like it is real life and we're not justifying or glorifying anything. We're just literally putting, shining a light on what is out there. And if you don't know about these things, then how can you help change it? The dirtiest thing I hear, and I hear it all the time, and I hear it from male executives, and I hear it from female executives. When I'm going, like, well, we, got, you know, we have to have 50-50 parity on this, we have to have women in this, these roles, they're like, well, we just gotta get the best person for the job. And it's like, fuck you, what does that mean? You're saying, I'm saying like, oh, I don't care if she's bad, just hire her. It's like, no, I'm not, I'm saying, do a deep dive and find the person who's good, you know, who happens to be a woman, happens to be a person of color, to, to do that thing. I'm working with young people as well, you know, not just people in the industry, but, you know, people who are, I don't know, who have been in care or the UK prison system or whatever it might be. And just seeing yourself reflected back for anyone is just so important. You know, it not only, it's not only about, you know, evoking a change within the industry, but in society itself. And I think it's important that everyone sees themselves reflected back. For newsrooms to thrive, to be creative, to exist, they need to represent the societies that they want to reflect. So they will encourage black and Asian minority journalists to walk through those doors, to get those jobs. But what happens to those voices once mm. they're inside? I don't want to do knife crime because I'm going to be the ghetto correspondent. That's exactly how these people feel now. And if they're losing their confidence, it's up to senior editors to bring these people through, to give them confidence, say, go out there, cover those stories and embrace them and own those stories. Yeah.